BBC News with Sue Montgomery. NATO countries have promised to continue sending military hardware to Ukraine for as long as it takes and to increase the manufacture of weaponry where needed. The commitment was made in Brussels, where NATO representatives are meeting, along with other members of the so-called contact group on Ukraine. Paul Moss reports. There were, in truth, no great surprises. From a NATO news conference, we heard that NATO member states remain committed to the defence of Ukraine, whether by sending military kit or by training its armed forces. And there was a promise to increase the manufacture of weaponry where it was needed. The only really new item on the agenda was reaction to this week's missile attacks by Russia. These were condemned as a war crime. Perhaps the most poignant moment came when a Ukrainian journalist asked when his family back home might feel safe. To that question, no clear answer could be given. After another day of protests in Iran over the death in custody last month of Masa Amini, the education minister has said some arrested children will have to undergo re-education. Kasra Naji reports. The statement by the education minister has shocked many Iranians on social media. Confirming that many schoolchildren had been arrested and jailed, he said some would be returned to their parents only after being re-educated in what he called psychological centres. After four weeks in which right groups say nearly 200 people have been killed, there is no sign that the protests are running out of steam. The Supreme Leader, Ayatollah Ali Khamenei, whom the protesters want to step down, has again commented on the unrest. He has said everyone agrees that the demonstrators were put up to it by the enemies of Iran. The European Union has agreed to impose sanctions on Iran following the violent suppression of those protesting over Masa Amini's death. The European Commission president said the shocking violence against women by Iran's security forces couldn't go unanswered. The World Health Organization says that 39 people have now died in an outbreak of Ebola in Uganda. On Tuesday, the government confirmed the first death in the capital, Kampala. Here's our global health correspondent, Naomi Grimley. The WHO thinks there have so far been 74 probable or confirmed cases in Uganda since the 11th of September. And more than half that number have died. The latest confirmed death was a man who'd fled his village in the centre of the country and gone in search of a traditional healer in the capital Kampala. It's an example of the challenges faced by contact tracers. The WHO's Health Emergencies Director, Dr Mike Ryan, is currently in the country and told the media there were still gaps in the current response. World News from the BBC. In the past few minutes, a jury in the US state of Connecticut has ordered the conspiracy theorist Alex Jones to pay $965 million to the families of victims of a school massacre. Twenty small children and six adults were killed in the Sandy Hook mass shooting in 2012. Jones, a far-right broadcaster, falsely claimed for years that the incident was staged by the government to try to introduce tighter gun controls. Health officials say an outbreak of cholera in Haiti has killed at least 18 people. The Pan-American Health Organization said there were 32 confirmed cases of the disease, with a further 260 suspected cases awaiting confirmation in the area around the capital, Port-au-Prince. An 18-year-old Palestinian man has been shot dead by Israeli forces during clashes at a refugee camp in the occupied West Bank. The Palestinian Health Authority said Osama Mahmoud Adawi died from wounds to his stomach at the Al-Arub camp. The incident comes after the recent shootings of two Israeli soldiers. Scientists in Australia have grown a collection of brain cells in a lab, wired it to a computer and taught it to play the 1970s tennis video game Pong. The researchers say the mini-brain can sense its environment and has the potential to adapt quickly like the human brain. Writing in the journal Neuron, they say the technology could lead to improved artificial intelligence. Dr Brett Kagan led the research. Right now we have the chance for drug discovery, disease modelling and understanding intelligence. The next stage could open up options such as cybersecurity management or uh, more autonomous devices. And finally, perhaps we could even lead to sentient and fully uh, autonomous robots that can act and change in the real world. BBC News.